Yesterday on six meters, mate, it was wall to wall stations. I tuned across 50 megahertz and it was just like someone had just flicked the DX switch to on. FT8 was lit up, SSB was firing, and I even know some people who bagged a couple of CW contacts. And yet, if you go on social media, people keep saying the bands are dead. Well, no, the bands aren't dead. You just haven't been on them at the right time. And here's the scary bit. We are past the peak of Solar Cycle 25, and the clock is now ticking. The best time to get on the air is right now, before it's too late. So we're on the downside of Solar Cycle 25, but the downside often delivers more consistent usable openings. There's less crazy solar flares, a little bit more stable propagation. Now we can expect to see 10 meters, 12 meters, 15 meters, and even six meters, as I mentioned, have more good days during this descent. Now, most of the models predict that the cycle will taper out in the early 2030s, which seems far away now, but that's only a good five to seven seasons away that we have left. And then after that, it's gonna go quiet, very, very quiet. So right now, the bands are alive, but many hams aren't taking advantage of it. So a lot look at the bands lately and think, ah, nothing's happening. But in most cases, it's not that the bands are dead. It's just that we're not looking in the right places or at the right time, or we're only checking one mode. As an example here, let me just show you what is happening right now, why I filmed this video. This is six meters. I usually monitor six meters quite a lot. Um, and I monitor on FT8 because I use that as a source of seeing what kind of activity is on the band because I know that FT8 whisper digital modes can work below the noise floor way before we get SSB or CW. So you can see here, I've got a lot of Japanese stations coming through. I've got a couple of locals, a couple of VK popping in there, but it's mostly Japan at the moment. So that's a good indication to tell me that the band is now open. So what's actually happening is FT8 is doing such a good job decoding these weak signals that it creates the illusion of activity being low on all of the other modes. And I mean, that's understandable. When the propagation is borderline, FT8 will always look busiest because it can pull those signals right out of the noise. Meanwhile, SSB and CW, they might simply sound quiet because the signals, they're just not strong enough yet. But here's the key thing. When those FT8 signals start getting above zero dB, that's your cue. It means that SSB and CW might actually be viable. And this is the moment to jump over to voice or CW and actually call CQ. Now, a lot of people, they may wait to hear someone first, but the truth is voice activity doesn't start until someone makes that first call. I just jumped on six meters the other day after FT8 signals were getting really strong. I jumped on 50 decimal 110, the international calling frequency, Called a couple of times, worked a VK2, worked a VK4, that was it, but that was great. I managed to make a couple of contacts. When the conditions are good, especially on the downside of the solar cycle, these opportunities are happening all the time. Now, let me tell you about that six meter opening yesterday. FT8 was crazy. The signals were coming in from Europe everywhere. I've never seen anything like it. I managed to get five new countries in on my DXCC, I'm only up to 18 on six meters, but hey, I'm working on it. And uh, I know that one of my mates, Richard, uh, VK7ZBX, he managed to work, I think it was 60 stations, all in Europe. And I had a look later on the PSK reporter at all of the signals I was hearing and the stations that were hearing me, and it was actually all over the place, all over Europe. And I was only using a diamond vertical, a diamond V2000 vertical. It wasn't anything elaborate. I was using 100 watts out of the radio here, and that was it. So FT8 can decode those super low signals. It can give you the illusion of massive activity, but when FT8 signals start to increase, that's when we want to start looking at SSB and CW. Now, unfortunately, I didn't hear any signals that were strong enough here because my antenna wasn't big enough. That's just the nature of six meters. And again, this can happen on any HF band. 20 meters has been really good. Uh, some of the uh, 20 meters and above has been really good recently. So again, if you start to hear signals starting to increase above that zero dB, plus five, plus 10, then jump on SSB. Seriously, call CQ, even if you hear nothing. Everyone is listening, but if no one calls, then you're never gonna know, are you? If we all called, we'd have huge SSB and CW pileups again.
So getting on the air before the cycle ends. These strong solar cycles, they don't have to happen that often. When the decline steepens, HFDX will dramatically reduce. 10 and 12 meters will go quiet most days. Six meters will become marginal, except for sporadic E. You're going to miss rare DX openings, long path propagation, the midnight gray line magic. All of these sort of openings are going to start to get less and less and less. So people who get on the radio right now will look back at Solar Cycle 25 as the good old days of DX. And at the moment, we're right in the middle of them. Now, I know some of you watching have your license and your radio is sitting there on the desk and you just haven't managed to get on the air just yet. Maybe you're not sure what buttons to press, what frequencies to use, or how to call CQ properly. Totally normal, totally understand. That's exactly why I built the ham radio in 30 days zero to hero course. It's a practical step-by-step -step course for new hams that actually gets you on the air and encourages you to get on the air. It's real how to call CQ, how to choose the bands, how to read the propagation, all the practical stuff that people wish that they had learned earlier. So if you want to make the most of Solar Cycle 25 while we still can, there is a link in the description below. So how to make some more contacts, even if the band sounds dead. Call CQ, even if it sounds dead. Lots of people have waterfalls and band scopes these days. They can see stations pop up. Just keep calling and someone will reply. Tune around and respond to others if you can hear them. Use PSK Reporter to see if FT8 transmissions are being heard in your area. Use VOACAP for band predictions. That's another good website as well. Check POTA for any live activations. There might be happening uh, at that time, and you can have a listen out for those. And just try some different modes, SSB, CW. Um, try some other digital modes as well. Activity creates activity. Ham radio is at its best during the high solar activity. Chasing DX is one of the most rewarding parts of the hobby. And you never forget your first long path or first long DX contact. You'll regret sitting out the best years of the cycle, which are happening right now. So if you haven't, pick up the microphone, call CQ. Because Solar Cycle 25, it's still delivering amazing propagation. But again, as we slide down the curve, the good days are going to become more precious. Now's the time to be calling CQ, trying new modes, making those dream contacts. And by the way, even though the sunspot numbers are high at the moment, there's something else happening that can make the bands go completely silent, even during the peak of the cycle. That's when the bands do go dead. If you want to know what that is and why it wipes out the bands, then you can watch this video over here.